Grace O'Malley was Queen of Umal, chieftain of the O'Mal clan, a rebel seafarer and fearless leader who challenged the turbulent politics of 16th century England and Ireland. While Irish legends have immortalized Grace as a courageous woman who overcame boundaries of gender imbalance and bias to fight for the independence of Ireland and protect it against the English crown. To the English, she was considered a brutal and thieving pirate who controlled the coastlines through intimidation and plunder. Through the course of her life, Grace raised and led armies, commanded a fleet of ships, was captured twice, imprisoned, faced execution, secured her freedom twice, fought pirates, was a master of political negotiation, and struck fear into one of the most powerful countries of the era, England. Yet despite her accomplishments, Grace O'Malley was not remembered in Irish history. In the annals of the Four Masters, the seminal source of Irish history compiled just a few years after her death, and in a region where Grace was active, there is not one mention of her name. The only explanation for such an enormous commission from Ireland's historical records is that Grace's power was uncomfortable for the men of her era and in Catholic Ireland. Fortunately, thanks to the work of biographer Anne Chambers, Grace's life has been pieced back together, largely from English state records, and she is now a much-loved hero in Ireland. Grace O'Malley, Gran Nimail, was born in Ireland around 1530 as a daughter of the wealthy nobleman and sea trader Dubdara O'Malley, who commanded the biggest fleet of ships in Ireland. For hundreds of years, the O'Malleys had been sailing their ships around the coasts of Ireland, Scotland and northern Spain, trading, fishing and plundering. When Dubdara died, Grace inherited his large shipping and trading business. From her earliest days, she rejected the role of the 16th century woman, instead embracing life on the sea with the O'Malley fleet. The income from this business, as well as land inherited from her mother, enabled her to become wealthy and powerful. During a time when Ireland was ruled by dozens of local chieftains, Grace O'Malley, also known in legends as Gran Whale, commanded hundreds of men and some twenty ships in raids on rival clans and merchant ships. She also ran afoul of government officials who made repeated attempts to curb her activity. The O'Malleys were one of the few seafaring families on the west coast, and they built a row of castles facing the sea to protect their territory. From their base at Rockfleet Castle, they plundered ships and fortresses on the shoreline and Scotland's outlying islands and taxed all those who fished off their coasts, which included fishermen from as far away as England. O'Malley's ships would stop and board the traders and demand either cash or a portion of the cargo in exchange for safe passage the rest of the way to Galway. Plundering and piracy were part of seafaring life for any coastal clan, and Grace made no exception. But it came with great risk. The penalty for piracy was death by hanging. To be a female commander of pirates was even more dangerous. To earn the respect and protection of her men, Grace had to lead from the front and be as courageous as those she commanded. Under the policies of the English government at the time, the semi-autonomous Irish chieftains were left mostly to their own devices. However, this was to change throughout O'Malley's life as the English conquest of Ireland gathered pace and more and more Irish lands came under their rule. Under the reign of Queen Elizabeth Thaindathath, England implemented a divide-and-conquer policy. They could not afford to send an army to conquer Ireland by force, so instead Queen Elizabeth used the feuding between Irish chieftains to her advantage replacing chieftains with those who promised to be loyal to her and adopt English law. But Grace would have none of it. England would not deny her or her husband Richard in Iron their rightful place in their clan according to Gaelic law. It was to this end that Grace raised armies and led rebellions, and it was not long before news of this rebel pirate had reached England. Letters written about her and sent to the English government described her as the nurse to all rebellions for forty years. Ambitious and fiercely independent, her exploits became known throughout all of Ireland and England. By March 1574, the English felt they could no longer ignore her predatory sieges, so a force of ships and men laid siege to O'Malley in Rockfleet Castle. Within two weeks, the Pirate Queen had turned her defence into an attack, and the English were forced to make a hasty retreat. But such victories could not go on forever. The English had been changing the traditional laws of Ireland, outlawing the system of electing chieftains, and Grace O'Malley was a threat to their aims. 
At the age of 56, Grace O'Malley was finally captured by Sir Richard Bingham, a ruthless governor who was appointed to rule over Irish territories. She closely escaped the death sentence, but over time her influence, wealth and lands faded until she was on the brink of poverty. But she was already plotting her next move. She decided to go over Bingham's head and straight to his boss, the Queen of England. She wrote to Queen Elizabeth explaining her plight. She asked the Queen to give her free liberty during her life to invade with fire and sword all your Highness's enemies without any interruption of any person whatsoever. It was an ingenious plan. In the guise of fighting for the Queen, she could continue her life at sea, unhindered by the English and free from Bingham's control. However, her situation took a turn for the worse. Her dearest son, Tibbet Na Long, Toby of the ships, who had also been engaging in rebellions against the English, was also captured by Bingham and was facing execution. Grace O'Malley jumped straight in a ship and set sail for England, undertaking the most dangerous journey of her lifetime. The seas around the coasts of Ireland were patrolled by English warships and Grace was a notorious rebel who would be seen as a great prize by any English captain. Grace sailed her ship down the Thames, determined to seek an audience directly with the Queen. It was a great risk. Grace could have been thrown straight into the Tower of London and executed, but fortunately for her, Queen Elizabeth was intrigued by this headstrong rebel woman. Grace and Elizabeth shared something in common. They were both powerful women in what was, at the time, very much a man's world. Through carefully worded letters and petitioning to the Queen's advisers, Grace secured her meeting with one of the most powerful women of her era. During the historic 1593 meeting with Queen Elizabeth the Bun, Grace came face to face with the woman against whom she had rebelled, and in whose hands her life and her son's life now lay. Grace explained to the Queen that her actions were merely to protect her family and her people. The Queen listened with admiration and pity as Grace told her story and how she suffered at the hands of the English, and in particular, Sir Richard Bingham. In this astounding meeting of two powerful women, both of whom fought for what they believed in, Grace managed to convince the Queen to free her family and restore much of her lands and influence. Armed with a letter from the Queen to this effect, Grace returned to Ireland. Her son was released from prison by a broken man. He had been tortured and could barely walk. Despite Grace's success in England, political unrest and turmoil continued to grow in Ireland, culminating in the historic Battle of Kinsale, which brought the curtain down on the old Gaelic way of life. It signalled the end of the world of clans and chieftains, and a new political age dawned. By this time, Grace was old and weary. She lived out her last years in the comfort of her fortress at Rockfleet. During the seventy years of her life, Grace O'Malley built herself a notable political influence with the surrounding nations, as well as notoriety at sea, making her one of the most important figures of Irish folklore. She successfully protected the independence of her lands when much of Ireland fell under English rule. She died around 1603 in Rockfleet Castle. But her story lives on as many folk stories, songs, poems and musicals about Grace O'Malley have continued to this day, preserving the legend of the Pirate Queen. The following is an extract from the song Granuale, believed to have originated in Company Leitrim about 1798, with the survivors from Mayo of the Battle at Ballinamuck between the Franco-Irish forces and the English. T'was a proud and stately castle. In the years of long ago, when the dauntless Grace O'Malley ruled a queen in Fair Mayo, and from Burnham's lofty summit to the waves of Galway Bay and from Castle Bar to Ballintra, her unconquered flag held sway, she had strongholds on her headlands and brave galleys on the sea. And no warlike chief or Viking heir had a bolder heart than she. She unfurled her country's banner, high o'er battlement and mast, and against all the might of England, kept it flying to the last. The armies of Elizabeth invaded her on loans, her warships followed on her track and watched by many a strand. But she swept her foes before her on the land and the sea, and the flag of Grace O'Malley waved defiant, proud and free. Grace O'Malley's name also lives on as a company has adopted it for a brand of Irish whiskey, gin and rum. The Connaught Telegraph explains how Grace and the alcoholic beverages became connected. The idea for a whisky dedicated to Grace O'Malley was initially conceived by Stephen Cope over ten years ago, combining two of his passions in equal measure, quality Irish whisky 
and the legend of Granuel. I was on an annual pilgrimage with some friends to Einish Bofin and brought a book about grace by Anne Chambers with me to read on the trip. The social aspect of the trip, the combination of the scenery around Bofin, Turk and Clare Island, along with the stories of this formidable woman who ruled the West Coast during a particularly turbulent time in Irish history, were inspiring. Grace O'Malley continues to spark an interest even today.